Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel. I have another golf ball review for you here today. Continuing along in the Top Flight family, I have the Top Flight Hammer Distance. So my last video was on the XL Distance, and I also have done the Hammer Control as well, uh, but this one actually is the Hammer Distance. So some things I've talked about already is that um, I think that the, the Top Flight market's a little oversaturated. It seems like they have quite a few golf balls, and considering I've already reviewed four of them, this will be my fourth now. There's still another one I have to review. Um, but however, this one is the hammer distance. Hopefully this one does a little bit better than the last one. Honestly, I didn't really see much use for the XL distance at all. Um, I thought it was just filler and honestly, it just seemed like a ploy to get some more money. So uh, let's see if the hammer distance is any better. All right, so I'm not gonna talk too much about the marketing because at this point you can check out one of my other reviews from the Top Flight Ball. Um, basically the gist is I love their new logo. Uh, their alignment tool though, it still leaves a lot to be desired. Even this one with having the hammer over the distance, um, it's a little thicker and it's a little unique, but honestly, that alignment tool just still doesn't do it for me. I don't like the arrows at the end. Um, you've got the dimple in dimple pattern, which is definitely unique, but I don't know how much it actually adds to the golf ball. Um, but overall, you know, it's an interesting design, and, and considering that it is something new for Top Flight, hopefully they just keep making improvements on it. All right, so getting into the chipping and putting, honestly, you know, I, I'm not actually gonna go out there to the green and show it like I usually do, because again, this ball is very similar to the XL Distance. The difference between the two is gonna be that the Top Flight Hammer Distance is a little softer. It actually doesn't feel firm and rockish like the XL Distance is. This one has a, a lot lower compression, and that's definitely apparent. Um, coming off the putter, it does spring a little bit more and it does seem to stop a little easier. Not that it has a ton of pull with the spin, but it does stop a little easier on the green with checkup just because of how soft it is. The hammer, uh, or no, excuse me, the XL distance was so firm and clicky that it just seemed to roll forever with, with virtually no stoppage whatsoever. Uh, so it does have that going for it. Now, neither of them are spectacular, unfortunately. You're not going to get a lot of checkup on the green it's it's gonna end up probably releasing heavier than most are used to. All right, now if this is your first time seeing my channel, I usually go a lot more in depth as far as the chipping, putting, marketing, all that stuff. Uh, but I've, since this is my fourth top flight ball I've reviewed, I feel like I've covered that at this point pretty much. So let's just hop into these numbers. Let's see how it does. Um, now, I am going to compare it to the XL distance because I feel like these two golf balls should be very similar, especially what top flight advertises them to do. Um, I also felt like the XL distance was kind of just filler and not really needed. So I'm just going to compare the numbers and see if they really are that different and also tell you how they compare to the other balls I normally test. Uh, let's go ahead and start right off the bat with the seven iron. Uh, the spin was 5,735. That was a lot lower than the XL distance gave me, but that's right in the sweet spot, so I definitely like that. Um, however, with ball speed, I did lose a little bit of ball speed, and that also lost about five yards of distance. So that actually pushed the distance numbers for the seven iron into pretty much the lowest I've tested so far. Uh, which is a little disappointing because this golf ball feels so much better off the iron than the XL Distance does. The XL Distance felt like a rock, whereas this one actually kind of has a nice feel to it, but I lost so much speed, so that's kind of concerning. Hopefully that's not all the way through. Uh, coming in, let's see, to the 5 iron. 5 iron, again, less speed, uh, less spin, less speed, though, again, about 4 mile an hour less spin. That ended up being significantly less distance. So that's gonna be some of the lowest distance numbers I've had. In fact, I believe with the five iron, that is gonna be in last place. It is, that's in last place by far. Uh, so not very good there. Uh, five carry, again, by far the lowest I've tested so far. The launch numbers across the board seem to be about the same for both golf balls, which I expected. Um, but that loss in distance, that is such a killer. Now, once we get up into the hybrid, um, it is you know pretty average for what I get with the hybrid. Uh, however, I will say that most golf balls stick to a three mile an hour radius in the hybrid. The hybrid just seems to compress golf balls really well, no matter what the situation is. So with that being said, it honestly isn't surprising. Um, it's not something to say, hey, the golf ball you know made a recovery. And no, most, most golf balls test in that. Um, really, the driver will be the telling tale of that. But uh, getting in with the hybrid distance, again, about average there. And then um, carry yards, it looks to be about average there as well. So it did compress a little bit better, even though it was softer, which is a little weird. But let's see how the driver did. Not too bad. It's about average, honestly. Uh, nothing spectacular. It was less than the XL distance. Um, Spin-wise, you're looking at, you know, a little bit less, which is nice. So the, the hammer distance did spin a little less, which I didn't expect it to. I really expected it to grip a little bit more since it's being compressed more, uh, but just didn't seem to get that, that feel or those numbers for it. Uh, and then, of course, if we're looking at, you know, the driver carry and the driver distance, 
Um, you know, uh, average in the numbers, you know, it, it definitely less than the XL Distance 4, so interesting enough. Um, the diff the total difference numbers between the, the XL Distance and the Hammer Distance was about six yards on the driver. Um, and then carry distance, again, about six yards as well. So I did lose a significant amount of distance there between the two golf balls, which is a shame. Okay, so overall, those numbers, you know, I really thought the XL distance was filler. I really thought that it was just going to be kind of the, the, the black sheep of the family, of the top flight family. But actually, it performs a little bit better than this hammer distance does. And that's a shame because the hammer distance feels a lot better. It feels a lot better off the putter. It feels a lot better off wedges and, and driving it and, and all of that. I mean, across the board, the feel is better. But I lost a distance. I lost numbers. Uh, now, you might be saying, well, hey, it's for slower swing speeds. You want to get the ball in the air. But I didn't get any difference in launch angle. The launch angle was the same as the firmer ball, which, again, is weird because you have a firmer golf ball that's supposed to launch a little lower usually. Uh, but it launches exactly the same. The problem I have with top flight golf balls, it seems, is that they're all just kind of following into this category of, you know, one says it's all about control and one says it's all about distance and one says it's all about, you know, forgiveness. And it's like, they all kind of just feel the same. They just have different compression numbers and that doesn't really help you on your game. They've all just kind of started to blend in. In fact, at this point, I can't even really remember off the top of my head what the control felt like because I remember it being very, very, very soft. But other than that, I don't see a lot of difference as far as the numbers go. Uh, so that is disappointing. Durability wise, it's not any better. So far, every single top flight golf ball I've tested has been pretty abysmal. Uh, the only one I even gave a kind of passing grade to was the control, and that's because I didn't have high expectations. Going in with low expectation on these as well, I mean, this one was definitely better than the XL Distance, but as you can see, it's pretty roughed up. The golf dot didn't last. It's got a very cheap cover on it. Uh, these golf balls just aren't meant to last, but the thing that's a shame about it is, is there are other golf balls. If you watch my last review, I actually, at the very end of that video, put some recommendations for two-piece golf balls that I did recommend. The competition's getting greater, and it seems like Top Flight's just kind of sticking in the comfort zone with what they know. Um, and unfortunately, this golf ball just doesn't have the durability or the performance numbers to really compete anywhere in this market. In fact, the XL Distance, I thought, didn't either. This is a step down from that. So my advice, that's going to bring me to my final segment, which is who is this golf ball for? Um, no one. I'm not going to give it even a passing grade because uh, truthfully, here's the thing. If you're telling me, well, hey, Nick, I need a really good two-piece golf ball that doesn't cost a lot of money. Get the hammer control. Oh, well, that's too soft, Nick. I want something a little firmer. Okay, then get the XL distance. Okay, well, that's a little too firm for me, Nick. Then, okay, play a Titleist Velocity. There's a lot of golf balls out there. A lot of them don't cost a lot, especially when you're in that two-piece market range. If you're somebody who's spraying the ball all over the course to the point where you know, you're losing that many golf balls anyway, you probably shouldn't be very picky about how it feels. If you're going to be that picky, I would work on the swing first. If you're thinking, you know, hey, I can't play the control because it's too soft and I can't play the XL distance because it's too firm and I can't play the bomb because it's too firm, work on the swing first, worry about the feel after the, after the fact because honestly, this golf ball ain't going to help you much in that department either. It's not going to give you a higher launch. It's not going to help with your forgiveness. It's not really going to add to your game. So even if you do like the feel, it's going to kind of be a wash. So overall, I just don't recommend it. I think that there are tons of other golf ball companies out there making better products. And I think even if you stick in the top flight family, even though I don't recommend top flight golf balls most of the time to, you know, people, I would say that there's a better option than this. So if you're looking for something just really, really dirt cheap, go out and just spray it all over the course, I would go with either the control or, you know, even the XL distance as much as I don't want to recommend that to you. Go with something like that. All in all, thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. More ball reviews coming your way. I still have one top flight left to do, which is the Gamer. That's going to be the next review. It's the three-piece golf ball, actually tailored more toward the, uh, the the intermediate player. So hopefully they kind of up their game. I've, I've been very disappointed in these last few top flight balls, so I'm excited to see something new. Maybe they've, they've kind of upped it, especially since the price is a little higher, too. As always, guys, keep watching and keep saving and keep learning. I appreciate you being here. Take it easy.